you have your Bibles, whether electronically or uh, in book form, please turn to Matthew chapter 1. We'll be reading from verse 18 through to 25. Continuing our little Advent series, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. And I want to think about the miracle and the mystery surrounding that first coming of Christ. As uh, the New Testament opens, we see the coming of Christ as a babe, as an infant. And as the New Testament closes, we see that great cry at the end of Revelation. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. Isn't it amazing that the New Testament opens with the coming of Christ and it closes with the second coming of Christ. The great uh, advent and coming of our wonderful Lord Jesus. But the great news is that uh, Emmanuel, God with us, remains with us to this day and that you and I can know friendship and fellowship and intimacy with Father, Son, and Spirit through Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. But as we read in Scripture, we know that God's ways and God's thoughts are so much higher and so much different than our ways and our thoughts. And we have to learn to live with not understanding everything in this life. I'm not sure the Lord would uh, have us uh, want to understand everything. Because if we did, we wouldn't need to keep trusting in him. We wouldn't need to keep reaching out to him. We wouldn't need to keep exercising faith in him if we understood everything that was going on. It is a mystery. It is a marvel. We see miracle at work. It's a great wonder. But we come to it season after season, year after year. We read the same scriptures. And if we're not careful, it can become all too familiar to us. And I think one of the challenges for us as God's people is that we never lose the wonder of this wondrous story, of this wondrous gift of God, of this wondrous, miraculous work of God, that God in Christ, Emmanuel, God with us, he came to reconcile the world to himself. And my prayer for each one of us is that the wonder of it would fall afresh on each one of us this year. Let us read from the scripture then, Matthew 1 and reading from verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Jesus. Emmanuel, which is translated, God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and took to him his wife, and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son. And he called his name Jesus. The mystery of God made man. The miracle of, as the Catholics call it, the Immaculate Conception. A virgin conceived by the Holy Spirit. The marvel of Jesus who came to save us from our sins. Angels. 
all around them. The overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, supernatural dreams, and the weight and power of ancient prophecy and promise hanging over it all. Make no mistake that Joseph would have known the scriptures. All boys were taught by the rabbis. The really bright, the clever ones, the smart ones would be fast-tracked to be trained up as rabbis and things. But all the boys would have been taught these ancient scriptures and promises. And isn't it interesting that he, he weighs these things while he thought about these things, while he pondered them, while he contemplated them. The original language and some of the commentators suggest there's a great passion and turmoil going on in his heart as he grapples with what is going on here. I know that there are times for all of us where it's difficult to understand what's going on in our lives. It's difficult to understand what the Lord is saying or wanting to do for us. May we be like Joseph, those that learn to grapple with the passion and turmoil going on in our hearts. And then in the midst of all that, to hear from the Lord. The Lord answered all that was going on in his heart through that supernatural dream where the angel came to him in a dream. Joseph, a just man, an upright man, a man of integrity, who when he finds out that Mary is pregnant, what other explanation can there be what other human explanation can there be than the fact that she's been unfaithful? You cannot blame him for coming to the first conclusions that begin to form in his heart. And because he's just and upright and a man of integrity, and he knows the Jewish scriptures, he knows the law of God, and he knows what the right thing is to do. He doesn't want to put her to public disgrace and shame. So his thought is to put her aside, divorce her quietly. They're fully committed to be married. They're betrothed. That's the start of this passionate dilemma that's going on in his heart and mind. You know, if people were to comment on us, would they describe us like they do Joseph? Just, upright, a man of integrity. That's what we want to be as the Lord's people, isn't it? How we live matters. Nothing is wasted. People are constantly watching how you live, what you do, what you say. Our beliefs are expressed through our behavior, aren't they? His dreams must have been broken. Mary. What's going on in her heart? We know that in Luke's gospel it tells us that she pondered all these things in her heart. And she too, although the... Uh, girls were not formally trained like the men. She had a great grasp of the scriptures as well. Uh, how do, why do I say that? How do we know that? Well, the Magnificat is just full of scripture. As families, they will have taught, they passed on the traditions of the faith and taught the scriptures to one another. Mary, who accepts what the Lord wants to do in her, despite the great cost that it will bring to her. Can you imagine what people are thinking about her? If Joseph is thinking it, you can be 
absolutely sure that everybody else is thinking it? Why is there no room for her in the inn when they get to Bethlehem? She will have gone to a family connection. She's been ostracized. She's been pushed aside because they don't fully believe what God is doing in her and through her. Hallelujah, Joseph gets to that point with the Lord's help. May we be those that get to the place where no matter how strange, how mystical, how miraculous what God is doing, we know because God has fully convinced us. And in Mary's case, favor with God does not guarantee popularity with man. You know, God will do things in and through you that will cause offense to other people. Can we stay faithful in those times like this couple do? And what about the burden of responsibility that they're carrying? You now, when Joseph gets that dream, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. I don't know how he got to grips with that, but he did somehow. She will bring forth a son, and you will call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now, for a Jewish person, that sounds like this is the Messiah. That would have been the great expectation, the great promise, the great anticipation that not just individuals but the whole nation was carrying. And as he pondered and passionately considered these things in his heart, the ancient prophecies must have come to his mind. Can you imagine the weight and burden of responsibility for both of them? We have been entrusted with caring for God's Son, the Messiah, the one who is going to save us from our sins. I don't know how long it fully would have taken to sink in. The Gospels suggest that they struggled with it for years. When Jesus sets about his ministry, they think he's gone out of his mind. You know, when the Lord wants to do mysterious and miraculous things in us, sometimes we just need to let it seep deeper and deeper and deeper and its impact take its full effect. But Joseph does exactly as he's instructed. He names this son Jesus. The Lord is salvation. Jehovah saves. Yeshua is salvation. Those are all different ways of translating it from either the uh, Hebrew, Aramaic, or the Greek. Emmanuel, God with us. God in human form. Through the virgin birth. Absolutely incredible. Mystery and miracle rolled into one. We'll never fathom it. We'll never fully work it out. We just have to live in the wonder of it. But it's absolutely a tenet of the faith, isn't it? It's there embedded in the ancient creeds. God is a God of miracles and the Savior came through miracles. Savior meaning salvation, deliverance and rescue. Now how might all this have an impact for us? If you're able, I would like you to take off your shoe and a sock and have a good look at your foot. Trust me, 
it's a visual aid for you to remember something. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who carry good news. I think my feet are one of my best features. You might not think yours are. <laughs> Foot. Faith. Openness. Obedience. Trust. You won't forget that now, will you? Both Mary and Joseph, in receiving this mysterious, this miraculous gift, they have to exercise faith in the Lord. What the Lord is saying, what the Lord is doing. This is not just for a moment, this is for a whole lifetime. There's a cost to this. There's an inconvenience to this. There's pain and sorrow going to be caught up in this. And as we sang, those gifts that the Magi, the kings, the wise men brought, give a hint and a glimpse of that. Let us be those that always have faith to believe what God wants to do in us and through us. Openness. Are we truly open for the Lord to use us in incredible, unusual, mysterious, and miraculous ways to be used as God would best see fit. It means we need to open ourselves to the supernatural realm, the angels, the Holy Spirit, hearing and seeing what God is doing. Obedience, even when we don't fully understand, even where it's going to be costly and hugely inconvenient. Are we willing to be those that will obey? We need to be those that not just hear the word of God, but those who are willing to do it and put it into practice, no matter what it means for us. Because at the end of the day, what is most important to you? His reputation and his great name or your reputation and your name? Are we willing to be, as the scripture says, fools for Christ? If it will mean bringing others to a saving knowledge of him. And we need to be those that always trust the ways, the word and the will of the Lord. Mary and Joseph trust, don't they? Even when they can't understand all that's going on, the full weight of it all, which will take years to sink in, they trust and they follow. Your beautiful feet, foot, your beautiful foot can remind you of faith, obedience, openness and trust. Always looking to the Lord our God above all else. And may we be those that like the end of the New Testament. The continual cry of our hearts is come, O come, Emmanuel. Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus. Come in my life more powerfully and come to the earth. Let your kingdom come in greater measure and may you come in all your fullness and bring the kingdom in its fullness. That's what it means to keep crying out, O come, O come, Emmanuel. But a final thought for us, and I believe this is true for each and every one of us. What has the Holy Spirit conceived in you right now? What is the Holy Spirit, what is God wanting to birth in and through you that will bring others to him he's doing that all the while in each and every one of us have we got the faith openness obedience and trust
to allow him to do it. Let's pray for one another. Father God, you are the God of mystery and miracle. That your mystery and your miracle is at work in each and every one of us. Give us those eyes of faith to see the miraculous all around us. To see you at work in the small, simple, mundane ways of life. And in the huge, incredible, uh, mighty miracles of life. May our trust be in you in both of those spheres. And Father, in the gap in between, may we be fully open to whatever you want to do in us and through us. And may we be a people of obedience. Just as your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, learned obedience even to death upon a cross, may we be a people who is ever increasing in obedience to hear and do what you would require in and through our lives. Father, take our feet and may they be the carriers of that beautiful good news to our friends, to our families, to this town, to this nation and across this world to the glory of your great name. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.